everybody, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my crime and policing channel. In today's session, I'm fulfilling a special request. So someone has uh, wrote in and asked me to cover use of force, which of course I'm more than happy to do. Creating some of the images for this, by the way, probably, I don't know if it's the weirdest thing I've ever done, but pretty up there. So this is my friend, um, I took him out of my daughter's bedroom and the um, thumbnail is me just pretending he got cuffs on and not using too much force. Okay, I hope you can see that. <laughs> Yeah, one of the weird things I've done. Anyway, yeah, so use of force. Um, I can understand why it can be quite confusing because you must think, oh, there's a fine line here between should I be doing it? Should I not be doing it? When do I do it? Which power do I use? And how do I know that I'm not going to get in trouble if I do use force? The main thing to remember um, and try and keep in mind that the best use of force is using none at all. And if you can diffuse a situation through your conversation skills, that's much better than having to get hands on with people. So what you need to remember as well is that everything you do as a police officer needs to be proportionate, legal, needs to be accountable for it, needs to be necessary, and it also needs to be ethical. And that's a mnemonic called PLAIN, which we use for everything. So when you're arresting people and stuff like that, make sure that you're ticking off those things. So proportionate, it's legal, um, you're accountable for your actions, it's necessary and of course ethical. Just because you can use force doesn't mean you should and like I said the best thing to do is try and diffuse the situation completely. Sometimes you're going to have to use force, that is what you're going to have to do and as a police officer you need to get used to it. In training you'll be given everything you need in terms of support and strategies in which you can use force without causing injury to yourself and the people that you're using force, or at least minimise those injuries and the risks that you're putting people under. Okay, sometimes your mere presence at the scene might diffuse the situation. Sometimes people see the uniform and go, whoops, we're in trouble now. We probably need to stop messing about. Or sometimes you might escalate it. Some people really don't like police officers and they might tell you such in quite a violent manner. The most important thing for you to do is to stay calm and to just remember that you are the public and the public are you. Go back to your Pelian principles. You are the face of the police. Don't lose your rag um, and use too much force on anybody. It will um, haunt you forever if you do do that. And there are some videos on the internet that I'm sure you've seen where people have used force, oh, way too much force, very excessive force on other people. And obviously they've lost their jobs and um, injured people who they shouldn't have injured. So there you go. So if you are gonna use force, make sure you use as little as possible in order to do what you need to do. As a police officer, you've got two main jobs. The first one is preservation of life, and the second is a protection of property. So you have to do that. And remember that everything we do has to be in line with our code of ethics, our national decision model. So if you're thinking that you may need to use force, Go through the national decision model in your head and make sure that's the only thing you have to do. Um, yeah, and make sure the code of ethics really is at the heart of what you're doing because that's what policing is all about. Before you use force, the APP, so the Authorised Professional Practice from the College of Policing, has given three key questions that you should ask yourself prior to using these powers. So what are these questions three? Question number one, would the use of force have a lawful objective? So for example, the protection of property, the prevention of injury to others, or the effecting of a lawful arrest. And if so, how high is that risk where you need to use force? Question number two, are there any means short of the use of force capable of attaining the lawful objective identified? So are there any other things you can do that's not use force? Conversation guys is the key. Question number three, so having regard to the nature and the gravity of that threat, and the potential for adverse consequences to arise from that use of force. So it might escalate if you use force, it might really kick off and expose others to harm. So putting all that in mind, what is the minimum level of force required to obtain the objective identified? And would the use of that force level be proportionate or excessive? Now it's really important that you ask yourself those three questions and also there's 10 key principles when looking at using force. I'm going to read these out to you from the policing website. So the 
College of Police in Website, by the way, the Authorised Professional Practice is like the Bible. If you're studying to be a police officer, I do recommend you use that for reference because it's always updated. And so, you know, the stuff on there is going to be, you know, recent. There's not going to be anything out of date on there. So it's really good. So the 10 key principles governing the use of force by the police service. I'm going to move over here and try and pop it there on my screen. So police officers owe a general duty to protect persons and property. I just said that. To preserve order, to prevent the commission of offences and where an offence has been committed, take measures to bring the offender to justice. You know that. Number two, police officers may, consistent with this duty, use force in the exercise of particular statutory powers for the prevention of crime or in effecting lawful arrest. They may also do so in self-defence or the defence of others to stop or prevent an imminent breach of the peace and to protect property. We've just said that, haven't we? Okay. Number three, police officers shall, as far as possible, apply non-violent methods before resorting to any use of force. Just said that as well. They should only use force when other methods have proved ineffective or when it's honestly and reasonably judged there is no realistic prospect of achieving the lawful objective identified without force. We just said that. Number four, when force is used, it shall be exercised with restraint. It shall be the minimum honestly and reasonably judged to be necessary to attain the lawful objective. Pretty sure I just said that too. Number five, okay, lethal or potentially lethal force should only be used when absolutely necessary in self-defence or in the defence of others against the threat of death or serious injury. Any decision relating to the use of force, which may affect children or other vulnerable persons, must take into account the implication of such status, including, in particular, the potentially greater impact of force on them. So, like I mentioned, you using force might really escalate things, so make sure it is the only option you've got left. Uh, number seven, police officers should plan and control operations to minimise the greatest extent possible recourse to lethal force and provide for the adoption of consistent approach to the use of force by all officers. Such planning and control will include the provision to officers of a sufficient range of non-lethal equipment and the availability of adequate medical expertise to respond to harm caused by the use of force. Um, so you will get some tools in your... Um, your uniform set, so you'll get your baton, obviously, handcuffs, um, CS spray, so the like pepper spray gas stuff, um, and sometimes you might be a taser equipped officer, which obviously will help you. And you get like these rubber bullet things as well. Individual officers are accountable and responsible for any use of force and must be able to justify their actions in law. You are responsible for the force that you use, okay. So if you decide, using the national decision model, that you're going to use some force on somebody, you must be able to justify it, okay? That's you, personally, not everybody else. If you've done it, you've got to answer for it. In order to promote accountability and best practice, all decisions relating to the use of force and all instances of the use of force should be reported and recorded either contemporaneously, so that means there and then, or as soon as reasonably practicable or as soon as reasonably practicable and that does mean that so it doesn't mean like two two weeks later it means as soon as you can any decision relating to the use of force by police officers must have regard to the duty of care owed by the relevant police service to each individual police officer and the discharge of his duties deployment of police officers in a public order context where force may be used can carry grave risks to their own safety and so must be the subject of rigorous control for that reason also. That sounds pretty scary, and I get that. Um, but you will be trained in public order training. So if you're a new officer coming through the system now, you should be going through public order training anyway. Um, and you'll have personal safety training. You'll be totally fine. You'll have all the training you need. And the best thing to do is just to remember that. And if you are in a situation like that, to listen to your commanders, because they know what they're doing, been paid a lot of money, they've done a lot of training, a lot of expertise to be able to give you that direction. So make sure you listen to it to keep yourself safe and others. So let's look at some powers then. Like I mentioned, you will sometimes, well, yeah, you will. As a police officer, you will have to use force sometimes. And that's because not everyone's just going to come wandering with the, hey, all right, you've got me, let's go. 
please put my handcuffs on. Not all people are going to do that. You might have people struggling and as such might just put a little bit of force on. But you need to maintain that you're using the minimal required. So just remember that. Remember, plain, proportionate, legal, you've got to be accountable for it. It's got to be necessary and it's got to be ethical. So when you're using force on people, you are actually impacting on their human rights. You're affecting quite a few different human rights articles. Article 2, which is the right to life. So I know I mentioned lethal force and stuff like that. You've got Article 5, which is your right to liberty. So if you're detaining somebody or taking a liberty away, you are affecting that. There's Article 3, which is a provision of torture. And if you're hurting somebody, you're affecting that article as well. And then obviously in number eight, which is everyone's right to a private and family life. If you're engaging that article there, obviously um, by infringing on that, that's another one of the human rights acts that you are infringing. Now, obviously as a police officer, you're going to do that because there are gonna be some occurrences when you have to do that, but it just means to make sure that you can justify that. You can't just go and grab hold of somebody because they've been a little bit rude to you. If we arrested and used force and everybody was a little bit rude to police officers, the cells would be full. In fact, there wouldn't be enough cells in the world for the amount of people who are rude to each other. Okay, so just get over that. If someone's giving you a bit of shit, take it. As long as it's not too bad, obviously. You might get cold names, just laugh it off. Just say, yeah, okay, no. Because not everyone's going to like you. But the trick is, don't rise to the bait. All right, so let's have a look at some of these powers, like I mentioned. There is some key legislation that you look at in use of force. The most common of this one is probably section 117 of the Pace Act 1984. Now, the Pace Act, as if you know if you watch my videos how much I like the Pace Act because I'm a mega nerd, and also it really did set the stall out for things uh, and make things much better for victims, witnesses, and suspects in relation to law. And the thing I like about section 117 is it's proper simple as well. So section 117, it provides authority for the use of force when executing the powers found in the Act, so the PACE Act. So you can use force section 117 when executing powers found in the PACE Act. Super, great, easy. You've also got section 3 of the Criminal Law Act. Again, this one's quite simple. A person may use such force as reasonable in the circumstances, in the prevention of crime, or in the affecting or assisting in a lawful arrest. That's of offenders or suspected offenders, or of persons unlawfully at large. That's section three of the Criminal Law Act, 1967, and section 117 of page we've looked at. So far, so good, right? The great thing is you've got an option. And if you do get a bit confused, ask your sergeant, ask your tutor, and they'll point you in the right direction. I've not finished yet though. Oh no. We've also got common law. I like common law because it's as old as time and I love history and I love criminology and policing so it's right up my street. So in common law it does recognise that there might be circumstances in which you need to use force to protect yourself or somebody else and in that case it's, you're not committing a crime under common law. Obviously you've got to be able to prove that you're doing that. It recognises as one of these circumstances that the person has the right to protect himself or herself from an attack and to act in defence of others and if necessary inflict violence on another in doing so. That's only if no more force was used than was necessary to repel that attack. So if somebody just like pushes you a little bit and you smack around the head with a brick, that's a little bit excessive. So you can only use force as obviously minimal required. We've mentioned that already about a million times. So a, a nice key point here that I'm going to read for you says, if you have an honestly held belief that you or another are in imminent danger, then you may use such force as is reasonable and necessary to avert that danger. Common law. Cool. That's three we've looked at. And section 76 of the Criminal Justice and Immigration Act 2008 tries to clarify all these things. And that's quite simple. So reading this from the College of Policing, section 76 is intended to clarify the operation of the existing defences above. Um, so it reaffirms that a person who uses force is to be judged on the basis of the circumstances as they perceived them. So all that stuff affects the use of force. Like I said earlier though, um, if you are a little bit confused, ask your tutor or your sergeants and stuff and you'll get there in the end. But the main things to remember is that section 117 gives you the right to use force when executing the powers found in the act. Common law, if you 
find yourself or somebody else in imminent immediate danger you may use force as much as necessary to repel the attack and not go over the top with it section three criminal law act 1967 a person, and I'm going to read this one straight off so you know I've got all the words in. A person may use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances in the prevention of crime or in the effective or assisting in a lawful arrest of offenders or suspected offenders or of persons unlawfully at large. So there are some legislation for you there. It's all covered. And the main thing to remember there is that if you find yourself in a position where you need to use force, you can justify it. You had no other option. You couldn't have just spoken to him. There's no way you could have deflected the situation. You had to use force in order to create order, in order to prevent crime, to protect other people, to preserve life, protect property, and all the things you guys do every day and every night as serving police officers in the UK. I hope that helps. Um, yeah, please let me know in the comments if you want me to cover anything else. I'm more than happy to do so. I love hearing from you all. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, look after yourselves, look after each other, and please, don't commit any crimes.